Welcome to a coffee chat in a van. Uh, tonight I am drinking some new-to-me coffee from my favorite roaster. Uh, well, one of my favorite roasters. Maybe it is my favorite. Uh, this is a Nicaraguan coffee from Groundwork, and I find that I really like most of what Groundwork puts out, as long as it's light roast, and this is a light roast coffee. And this is mighty, mighty tasty. Uh, I always think it's funny to read the uh, little tasting notes. So this one says it is cherry blossom and uh, what's the other one there? Almond. Cherry blossom and almond. That's a that's a stretch for me. But um, I'm not smelling cherry blossom and almond. But I guess if I if I read it on the bag and then take a sip. I guess I can get cherry blossom and almond, maybe, possibly. I just find it funny. I don't know who comes up with these with these terms and uh, these tasting notes, but uh, probably just because I don't have a very refined palate. But I know what I like, and I know that I like light roast coffee, and so usually if I stick to a light roast coffee, I am good. And this one I'm happy with. And I should point out that uh, this is a very expensive coffee, and I only buy it if it's on sale, and it's got to be a good sale. And this one was a very good sale. It was $5 off this bag, so it brought it down to about $10 a bag, which is kind of my limit these days for coffee. Although uh, I've been buying coffee for much less than $10 a bag lately. I've been on quite a hot streak of finding really inexpensive coffee uh, or at least coffee that's on sale, and so I've been pretty pretty fortunate, so I'm pretty well stocked up for coffee for the next few weeks, which is fine by me. Now, I have been neglecting to do these little coffee chat videos, and I, I kind of like doing these little videos. I mean for them to be a little informal chat with us, uh, just me sitting down and talking about a variety of things that are either on my mind or being able to answer some of your questions that uh, maybe are a little easier to answer than in a vlog type video that I have been kind of doing more of lately. And I think the vlog type videos are a little more popular and I've heard from a number of you that you do enjoy these little coffee chat videos, but I've also heard from more people that they don't like these coffee chat videos. And so I've been kind of backing off of doing these little coffee chats. And it's not to say that I'm not going to do any more of these. My intention is to do more of these coffee chat videos, uh, but if they're not popular and you don't want to watch them, then I don't need to make so many, many of them, if that makes sense. Uh, so if you uh, do like these coffee chat videos and you would like me to do more of them, this is your chance to uh, voice your opinion. You can uh, hit the little thumbs up and leave me a comment down below in the comment section and just let me know that uh, you'd like to see more of these. Uh, I don't really need to say uh, to all of you that don't like these videos to leave a comment to tell me not to do these videos because uh, all of you that don't like these videos, you, uh, you seem to know where the comment section is and you seem to know uh, to uh, voice your opinion quite easily. So, <laughs> which is okay. It's okay. As long as uh, nobody's being rude in the comment section, have at it. Let me know what's on your mind. So the other day I realized I have not really addressed this snazzy microphone here, except for a little YouTube short video that I did. And so for anybody that didn't see that YouTube short, uh, this is the HyperX Quadcast S USB microphone. That's a mouthful, but uh, this is a microphone that is a USB-based microphone, which means it's a really easy plug-and-play microphone. I found I needed a microphone for doing kind of these little talking head videos, and so I looked around and looked at some options, and I decided on this USB microphone because of the ease of use with it. Uh, I can just plug it straight into my iPad and I'm off and running. I don't have to do any real settings. I don't have to do anything uh, else. I don't need to buy anything else. I just need one cable and I'm good to go. 
Now, because this Hyper X Quadcast S microphone, boy, that's really hard to say, uh, but because this microphone is aimed at gamers and streamers, they've added this colorful lighting effect. And to be quite honest, I don't particularly like it. Uh, I would like to turn it off. Uh, unfortunately, because I'm using an iPad and not a regular computer, I don't have software to control that. Uh, if you do have a computer, there is some software that you can download that you can control the LED lighting. You can set it as one color or make it change a variety of colors depending on your needs. Uh, but I don't have that, and so when I plug it in, it just does this little rainbow effect. But if I had my way, I would probably turn it off. Now, even though this is a plug-and-play type microphone, this microphone does have some other features which are kind of nice. Uh, for one, right on top is a mute button, and it is, it is a capacitive touch mute button. So if I just touch it, it mutes the microphone without giving any feedback through the cabling to my recording device. Uh, also, right on the bottom of this microphone, there is a gain setting, and the gain setting is kind of a sensitivity setting on the microphone. So I can turn that up or down depending on the needs at the time. If I want to use this microphone, say, out of frame, I can turn the gain setting up. Uh, or if I've got the microphone basically right in front of me, I can turn the gain setting down or the sensitivity down a little bit. And that does help kind of cut out the outside noise of this microphone. Uh, one of my little issues with this microphone is it's pretty hot even on a low gain setting, a low sensitivity setting. Um, what I mean by that is if there's a car that drives by or somebody walks by, even when I have the sensitivity really turned down low, it comes through loud and clear. It's one little downside to this microphone. And I have added a little windscreen to the microphone here, and it sits on this side of the microphone toward me because that's the way I address it. And it does kind of help cut down on some of the plosives, uh, the popping sounds, if you will. And I'm not very good at controlling those uh, from my speech, and so I needed a little extra help uh, with that. But uh, supposedly this microphone has a built-in windscreen and wind guard uh, that are supposed to control some of those popping sounds like the P sounds uh, but I found I needed just a little bit of something extra and so I bought a little eight dollar windscreen and it does help a little bit and the last couple of features that this microphone has is it does have a headphone jack so you can plug in some headphones and actually listen back to what is being recorded, which is really helpful in certain situations. Uh, and then it also has a variety of polar patterns or microphone pickup areas. So right now I have it on the stereo setting just to give you a little idea. And depending on the device that you're using to watch this video, you may be able to tell that this is stereo sound, uh, especially if I kind of get in here and go to this side of the microphone and then move around to this side of the microphone. You can really pick up the stereo sound this way. And I'll just keep doing this for just a little bit to give you just a little better idea. And uh, this is true stereo sound. It has pickups on both sides of the microphone. And if I come back in here to center, it should be fairly even, but still stereo. And this is a popular setting for ASMR type videos. Uh, this is not a setting that I normally use. Uh, I don't really do true ASMR videos, and so uh, this is not a setting that I would really recommend. For me, I normally have it in uh, the mode that would just pick up uh, here on this side of the mic and just me addressing it. Uh, but with a stereo setting like this is, you get a lot more going on it's certainly a more interesting sound, uh, at least I think. So that's just a little bit about my HyperX Quadcast S microphone. And that doesn't get any easier the more I say it. It's a real tongue twister for me. <laughs> anyway, um, I like this microphone. I don't love it. Uh, I don't particularly like the sound of my voice through it. And if I'd have known 
what my voice sounded like with this microphone, I probably wouldn't have bought it. Uh, but I was looking for a much better quality microphone. I had a Blue Yeti microphone uh, for my first kind of uh, sit down and address type microphone. And that microphone is very similar to this one in that it has a lot of the same features. Uh, but I found the quality to be very poor with that Blue Yeti microphone. Just wasn't happy with it at all. Like I said, I'm not super happy with the sound of my voice on this microphone. But the nice thing is uh, the editing software that I use, I can go in and do some minor adjustments and kind of clean up the sound a little bit and just make it a little easier to listen to. I think uh, straight out of the microphone into the iPad, if I don't do anything to it, my voice comes across as a little bit harsh, at least to my ears. Uh, but that is because I am using some studio monitor headphones when I edit. And so sometimes that picks up a little bit more of the harshness. So like I said, depending on the device that you're listening to, uh, you may get a little more or a little less uh, quality sound through that. Uh, if you're listening with headphones, you're definitely going to be picking up a little bit more. Uh, and that's both good and bad uh, with this microphone. So I don't really suggest this microphone. It's not a microphone I, I really recommend. But if you want a really easy microphone that's good quality and it has pretty good sound, uh, it is a good choice, I think. Um, even though the LED lights do drive me a little bit crazy. <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks for watching, everybody. I really appreciate it. Thank you.